Hey guys, what's up, Green Machine Sam? Back with another video, and today we have another episode of Bears React content. And uh, if you watched last night's game, it's it's not getting any better. It's really not. Um, last night we played the Chargers, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't like what I saw after a good week against the Raiders. And I know it's the Raiders. That's part of the reason why the thumbnail was like, "Calm down, it's the Raiders," and the title was, "Calm down, it's the Raiders." Was because I knew the Raiders were bad, but man, we just didn't look like a, like a competent team at all. There's no way Fluce is around next year. There's no fucking way Fluce is around next year. And I think that has to be the major talking point is Fluce needs to be gone going into next year. He needs to be fired. He's going to get fired right after the season. If he doesn't, there's going to be actual problems in Chicago. So I have a list of what I saw last night. Um, I didn't live tweet a lot near the end. I was tweeting a little bit, but it just was not a fun time last night and I was not having a lot of it. You know, it just got annoying at points and I just didn't really want to deal with a lot of it. The first things up is Tyson Badgett isn't QB1. And I think most Bears fans knew that deep down. Even if you wanted to believe in him, even if you were trying to push that narrative, I think a lot of us knew that that wasn't the case. Now, I'm not saying I was trying to push that narrative or that. You know, I thought he was going to be QB1, but I think he could be a career backup or a fringe starter or, you know, a bottom bottom of the league starter, at least, you know, in his next location or whatever. He'll be a good quality backup. He's probably earned himself a contract after he's done with the Bears. I don't know how long he signed, if it's a three year or if it's two year or if it's even a one year because he was an undrafted guy. So I don't know how long the Bears signed him for, but he definitely probably earned himself a contract afterwards. And his Madden rating definitely went up. He should be at least a 60 compared to his fucking 52 that he is currently. And, you know, they finally showed him respect by switching up some of his gear. They didn't get all of his gear correct. He doesn't wear sleeves. He didn't have a fucking, uh, what is it, the Exxon? The fucking weird looking helmet that doesn't have a top bar. They had him wearing that and a visor where he were, where instead he wears a speed flex. They finally showed him some respect and gave him fucking his correct fucking helmet. He's still, he, he has a long neck in real life, and yet they had him have the shortest neck in Madden. So at least Madden's finally paying him a little bit of respect. Next point is Luke Getzey tries to have shootouts with better offenses and doesn't understand when to help out his quarterback. I don't know why Luke Getzey is still the OC. Why the fuck are you still running him out there as the OC? If I'm Fluce, I'm changing shit every couple of weeks, if anything. I'm going to prove to people that I am a competent, you know, leader of men. Right now, I don't even think anybody would hire him to come back and be their D coordinator or assistant D coordinator or assistant head coach. They shouldn't. And Luke Getze is being proven to, I hope nobody even gives him a quarterback coaching job. Like, this dude is such fucking dog shit. The amount of fucking wide receiver screens and running back screens that I've seen and the predictability of this offense. The only thing that surprised people last night was the two deep shots that Tyson Badgett took where one was busted coverage and one was just a better ball and a better catch. D-line has no pass rush moves. I don't think I saw a single pass rush move last night. I really don't. These dudes literally are like their, their favorite thing is just to bull rush and just keep people at distance. I, and, and it leads me into my next point, which is like, Fluce must be playing favorites or something. The amount of shit, I don't know if Yannick was injured last night or if Terrell Lewis isn't available. I know he's not on the team currently. Holy fuck, the amount of times I saw Khalid Kareem just fucking run into the offensive lineman and not do anything. The amount of times I've seen Demarcus Walker run into the offensive line and not doing anything. It is getting fucking annoying at this point. Fucking find a pass rush move. Do something. Spin move. You know, swiping, swimming, something. Just anything. Fucking hand fight with the dude. Stop just titty bumping each other. It is to the point where the back end is suffering because this front line can't fucking win a pass rush move. We are one of the worst teams in pass rush right now. We do not have sacks. We do not have hurries. And I, I don't understand how this defensive line is so bad, especially the edge rushers. Um, the D tackles have some potential, but, man, these edges, I, I can't see any of them staying after this year. 
If you're poles, you get rid of all of them. You get rid of all of them. You take the hit on Walker. And you let everybody else go. And I mean everybody. Because Demarcus Robinson, Dominique Robinson is going to be 26 going into next year. Like, he's old. I understand it would only be his third season. But we can't wait around for a guy forever. Uh, Velas Jones must have some blackmail on uh, Iberflus or Ryan Poles. There's no doubt about it. The amount of shit that he's done just this year alone would end up getting you cut on a good team. Or even a quality team. Or an okay team. He's not cut. This dude continues to run out bad kickoffs. He continues to miss his chances when receiving. Like, yes. Look, I'm going to say something. Yes, the ball wasn't 100% good from Tyson Badgett. But you can't lead him anymore. If you lead him anymore, he was halfway in the end zone where he missed that, where he missed that catch. If you lead him anymore, the ball goes out of the fucking end zone for anybody saying you could lead that ball better. And if you watch the replay, he didn't come open until really late. So you can't lead that ball early or the defense backs would have reacted faster. It's so fucking annoying. I want Dante Pettis back. Pettis was at least an okay receiving threat last year. And fucking added at least a little bit of value in the punt return game. I don't understand why Velas Jones still has a job. And Pettis is only like a year old or two. Maybe two tops. And motherfucker has been in the league for like six years. Velas Jones, this is his fucking third year. And he's maybe a year younger than Pettis. I don't understand why Velas Jones has a job. And I, I don't know. It's just annoying. Eddie Jackson didn't play. Being a healthy scratch. Not on the injury I mean, I think he was on the injury report. I just don't think he played. Um, but he was dressed on the sidelines. Uh, they just never took him in, it seemed like. Or if they did, I didn't see him because he wasn't making a play. And if Eddie didn't get played last night, I don't understand this coaching unit. You have nothing to lose. You all know you're getting fired at the end of the season. Why not play your best players? Why not say, hey, we're going to try some stuff? Why not go, hey, fuck it. This is our last season. Why not? Go ham. Why not try something? Komet, Mooney, and Moore should all be quality players. I'm not saying Mooney could be a top receiver. I'm not saying he could be, you know, the best number two and Moore could be a, a, the best number one. They're good enough to be better than what they are. And Komet, he's already what? I, I think he's like already starting off as like the 11th paid highest uh, tight end. And you figure there's probably going to be a couple more beating him uh, in terms of contracts over the next couple years. So it's like, Komet could easily be a top 10 re- receiving tight end in the league. I-, I feel like. I feel like with consistent offense, consistent coaching, consistent quarterback play, I think those guys could easily be not the best in the league, but they definitely could be quality, uh, especially in their roles. And that just brings me into other points, which is if Mooney doesn't get paid, I want to start seeing more of uh, Tyler Scott. There's no reason if you don't think you're going to be bringing Darnell Mooney back in the offseason, to continue to run him out there over guys like Tyler Scott. You know, especially when they have similar, you know, not play styles, but similar qualities. I want to see Tyler Scott more if you don't plan on paying Mooney. I think that's just a big thing that needs to happen. I understand Floos is trying to show people what he's worth, but he's not doing a good job of it either way, you know. And I know maybe Poles would want to see Tyler Scott as well if he doesn't plan on re-signing Darnell Mooney. Isn't going to be paid. I want to see Scott in more opportunities, more roles, more stuff going on. Next thing we're going to talk about is the offensive line. And this is some big stuff. Jenkins and Wright are legit. You know, Jenkins' biggest problem is just staying healthy at this point, which is a big problem for him so far in his career. But Jenkins is definitely legit. Wright's definitely legit. Those two guys are going to be franchise offensive linemen for a while. Patrick Lucas and Cody Whitehair are both cooked in pass protection. They're not bad run blockers. They're not. They're they're cooked in pass protection. The amount of dog, they are fucking cooked in pass protection. They need to be taken off the field. And that just brings me into my next point, which is I want to see a lineup of when this when Braxton Jones does return. I want to see a lineup of Braxton Jones, uh, Tevin Jenkins, Doug Kramer, Jatir Carter, and Darnell Wright. Now, yes, Jatir Carter... Maybe he isn't the best player right now at guard that we could put out there. I do want to see it if he could handle himself with Doug Kramer next to him. I, I, I just want to see what Doug Kramer and Jatira Wright are. At this point, especially if Fields is going to be missing more time, if it's going to be Tyson Bajant, 
you know, I'm not saying I'm okay with Tyson Bajan getting hurt. I don't ever say, hey, I want somebody to get hurt. But the risk to reward is better with Tyson Badgett back there, Bajant back there, uh, playing quarterback if we decide to trot out this offensive line. I don't know when Braxton Jones is coming back or what his timetable is. They still haven't given us a, a clear update on Braxton Jones, I think. But that could be a lineup that I do want to see. Or, hell, I want to see if fucking Nate and if Doug Kramer is in it. I want to see if Nate Davis or Jatir Carter want to play fucking center at this point. Like, see if one of them want to play center. Like, be like Jatir. Hey, Jatir, you know, do you want to play some center? You could possibly have the ability to start if, you, if you're good enough. You know, type of attitude. I don't know. I just want to see something. There has to be some type of fix. I don't think Braxton Jones is the franchise left tackle. I don't think Carter or Kramer are probably going to be franchise guys either. At this point, you got to try something. You really do. Of course, I'd rather have Jenkins stick next to right, and then we could just focus on that entire left side going into next year, you know, with Nate Davis still being here and on a three-year deal, and then Carter and Kramer both having potential that you could just try. Hell, I want to see Dan Feeney at this point. I want to see somebody else, you know, just try something. What's the worst that's going to happen? You know, Tyson Bajan's going to go down? Cool, we're going to be guaranteed the number one overall pick with Nathan Peterman and Trace McSorley. Jalen Johnson and Tyreek Stevenson should be a good set of corners for years to come. I don't think they're going to be anything special. Jalen Johnson has played very well this season, and Tyreek Stevenson has continuously shown development. And, you know, you could throw Kyler Gordon in there. I don't... And Jaquan Brissier's fine. Jalen Johnson and Tyreek Stevenson should be good corners for years to come as long as they stick together and that also just brings up the point of Jalen Johnson needs to be paid you know Ryan Poles recently came out and said you know we want to keep homegrown talent but we got to find a way to work the contracts together yeah of, of course Jalen Johnson I don't think should be paid you know top 10 corner money but you know he should be paid he definitely should if we don't pay him somebody else will and somebody will find a steal for him now of course you know the defense line isn't doing the back end any favors the Coaching staff isn't doing the back end any favors as well. You know, not playing Eddie Jackson, plus the plus the D-line being bad, plus you're still playing them in zone in weird situations, but then you want to play them in man in the red zone where you should be playing zone more. I, I don't understand, you know, what exactly Fluce's problem is, but and the last and final point I really want to talk about before we get into my prediction of, of next week is... Chris Collinsworth was right. Please shut the fuck up. He was not saying Tyson Badgett was a better quarterback. He was not saying Justin Fields should watch him and play like him. No. He is saying there is certain shit that Justin Fields does not do that Tyson Badgett was doing. Understanding. Oh, hey, this play is dead. I do not need to extend it. I do not make need to make this problem worse. Don't fucking scramble for 30 seconds and then get sacked for a negative 12-yard loss. Get rid of the ball, reset, live to fight another fucking down. That's what he is saying. He Also, getting the ball out quick, setting your feet, getting going, understanding protections, understanding where guys are coming from, understand where the blitzes are, understanding all that basic shit, the pre-snap stuff, understanding when to... Say, okay, I can't make this a play. I need to shut it down, and I need to get our offense into a better situation. Taking an incompletion is better than having a chance at a two-yard gain from a scramble. Taking an incompletion is better than getting sacked or throwing a pick or some stupid shit that we've all seen Fields do. Chris Collinsworth was not saying he was a better quarterback last night. Stop fucking overreacting. Nobody was saying Tyson Bajant was a better quarterback last night. But he was doing little stuff correct. He was adjusting. He was saying, hey, I know my offensive line is five on six right here. I think the blitz is coming from over here. So I'm going to slide this way and I'm going to start looking immediately. And if nothing's there, I'm going to move. His pocket presence was better. His understanding of blitzes. Him, yes, he had two not great picks. I understand that. Nobody was saying he was a better quarterback last night besides delusional or troll motherfuckers stop pretending like he was like people were saying Tyson Bajant was a better player and that Justin Fields needs to watch him and learn yes he needs to learn some stuff but it wasn't stuff that people hadn't been saying for weeks on end 
you know, his pocket presence, understanding when to not take a sack, understanding when to throw an incompletion, understanding when to just get rid of the ball, understanding a lot of stuff. This doesn't mean Tyson Bajan was a better quarterback. This doesn't mean Tyson Bajan is going to be QB1 in Chicago. I just don't understand how people took what Chris Collinsworth was saying and went, oh, he thinks Tyson Bajan's a better quarterback than Justin Fields. No, he thinks Tyson Bajan is the next, you know. I don't understand why people have to overreact to everything. Stop pretending like that's what he was saying. Uh, next week, I think we have the Saints. Yeah, we have the Saints. I hope that Molly Watt the living shit out of us. Rashid Shahid should have a decent game, especially with the back end of the safeties being backups. Jaquan Brisker and Eddie Jackson, I would assume, should be back. So that might help slow things, some things down. I don't know. I. Uh, I don't, I don't even know what to say at this point anymore. The Saints have kind of surprised me in how bad they are, but then have flashes of good. Um, and the Bears have surprised me just how bad they are. Just how bad they are. One last thing I will say is I don't understand at the end of the game, there was two minutes left. The Chargers had basically been like, hey, we're done for the night. And the Bears didn't even try to go put an offensive drive together. They didn't call a timeout and say, you know, especially after that third down from the Chargers when they were about to go punt. I think there was like a minute 20 left on the clock, something like that. And Flus didn't call a timeout to go give Tyson Bajan another set of reps. You know, give the offense another try. I don't understand that. I think building momentum going into the next week is cool. I think getting that offense another drive, you know, letting them have a real two-minute drill. You know, I I would put them out there and say, hey, you know, I know we're not going to, you know, I know we're down 17 currently at the moment, but go out there, put a drive together. Prove to me that you guys want this. Prove to me, prove to the fans that you guys deserve this. I, I tweeted that at the end of the game, you know, when, when Flus wasn't calling the timeouts. I'm like, I'm like, if you called a timeout on that third down, you had a minute 20 or a minute 15, something around there. You, you still have two timeouts. You get to have your offense back out there. You get to go have a drive. E- even if it ends in a pick, so be it. I want to see this coaching staff isn't doing any favors for themselves. Or, or their players. I've said it once and I've said it again. This coaching staff is gone after this year. If they're not, I don't see how Chicago Bears fans will support them going into next year. Or at least support them in the way that Chicago Bears fans should. With that means, that, guys, if you guys enjoy this video or any of the videos like this here on my channel, I'd appreciate it if you guys stick around and subscribe. I'll be back with more videos like this, back with more Bears content, back with more Tennessee Titans franchise. I didn't get a chance to record any Tennessee Titans franchise today, but I am hoping to record some tomorrow. So hopefully those videos will resume Wednesday through Friday, as well as uh, New England Patriots Rebuild should be coming out later today as well. Stick around for that stuff. Uh, this should be going up before it. If not, it will. this video will be coming out Wednesday uh, morning then instead. Uh, today's Monday, 10.30, 10.30 uh, but we'll see what happens. With that being said, guys, like I said, if you guys want to stick around and subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And I'll be back with more videos like this. I'm out. Peace.